Hello and welcome to this video. This is going to be a short one about the Blender Asset Library. Um, I don't know how many of you actually know about it or use it. It's uh, not a necessarily a new feature anymore, but nevertheless, I thought um, I'll dig into it a little bit. Um, I haven't used it that much and I didn't honestly know what it can do and how many functions it really had. Um, so I educated myself a little bit and wanted to pass on that knowledge. So first of all, why should we use it and uh, where can we find it and also that basic stuff, right? Um, well, why I guess is a pretty obvious um, thing because uh, it allows us to quickly access assets that we either made ourselves or we bought an asset library or whatever that has this kind of functionality in it, like some of the big, medium, small stuff. And we can quickly drag and drop instead of having to go through this like open file, search for it, and then kind of import it or whatever, right? We can have it just here, drag and drop it in, and that's that. So let's have a quick look as to where it is actually at and how we can enable it so you get all you go down here you have usually the shader editor open i guess um, and you have here the asset browser so we can click on that i already have some little stuff in here and i'm set on the user library we can also switch this to all libraries which is kind of like the default thing but i have a lot of stuff in there so it takes forever to load this thing this where that's why i switch to the user library so in order to set it up usually what you need to do is you go to preferences edit preferences go to file path and then here you have the option to add several libraries not only one so I have one general library which is in a certain location so you can click plus or you can click minus to get rid of it um, click plus and then you can add a user library right so I have one where I just drop in whatever stuff I make myself you can also rename that by double clicking on it and you can rename it and it appears down there user library um, there's also stuff like again I just mentioned the stuff you bought for example big medium small it's in here as well so you can you don't need to necessarily like take that entire file um, or the files that uh, you downloaded from some pack you purchased and you ha don't have to put it in, the, in, in your own user library. You can just direct Blender directly into that separate folder and then just load it from there. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, right? And then once you have that set up here, you can go down here and you can see all libraries or you can select the library file the location folder that kind of mirrors what you have on your hard disk in here so for the sake of this demo i'm gonna stick to the user library the stuff i make myself um, because of, of course i want to show you how to make your own assets reusable especially in the light of like let's say the last video i did about the fog like how can we make this fog easily like reusable and have it maybe in the asset browser so that we can immediately like drag and drop it into a, a new file that we want. So there's a couple of different file formats actually that um, you're able to access through the asset browser, the asset library. So for example, we can, I have this new file open here. This is just my start file, uh, nothing spectacular, right? You can see here cube and whatever. So. What I can, for example, do is that I'm here in the in my collection. I click on this asset here on this object. I can right click and I can say mark as asset. Well, and that's pretty much it. So all you need to do now is actually save this file into your user library folder that you just defined. So if I do that, say save as I already navigated here of course I can call this whatever I want doesn't really matter I can call it test and then I can save as and well, some other stuff popped here up here as well from a different plugin but it doesn't matter um, I have the cube in here now like I have here and 
You see it's called cube because this item here is called cube. If I want to rename that, excuse me, if I want to rename that into something else, let's call it the super cube, then it will follow immediately. I don't even need to save the file, it will follow it immediately. Another thing I can do, for example, is that I have this, I can have multiple objects in the same file. And then if I right click that and say mark as asset, I will get this item here as well in the same file as a separate object, as a separate kind of asset, even though it lives in the same file. It's pretty cool. I can also mark cameras. I have a camera here. I can also do the same with lights. Works the same way. It's pretty cool. What I also can do, and I mean, this is a bit of a bad example, but you can do it. Once you open this here and you have the material here, I can also mark that separately as an asset and then it appears here. So not only do I have objects, cameras, lights, I can also save materials here. And you can also do stuff like, let's say you have a geometry node attached to this. So let's say we have something here and uh, let's do something very, very simple. We just want to, let's get a primitive here and join that. So we have this amazing little thing here. And if I go back to the asset browser, this will be copied with it. The asset that I have here will include the geometry node tree as well once I drop it into something new, which is pretty cool. One more thing you can do is actually that you can save the world as well, which could include an HDRI um, or your world settings that you frequently reuse. You can right click on this one here. You go here to the world properties and then you go here. You right click, not left click, right click and mark as asset as well. And now you have the world saved. And that could include anything that you really, for example, have here, if you go to the shader editor, world, everything that's here in here, whether that's like, um, again, a node tree or whether that's an HDRI, anything can be saved here. And then it's gonna be available through the asset browser, which is pretty handy as well. So you see there's a variety of things and all like basically through one file. Yep, so that's about it. One thing maybe to note is that you can also select the entire collection and you make that into an asset as well. You can do that as well. So you can see, you make an asset out of this collection and that will work too. Um, something else that you can do, but it's not quite working for me yet, is that once we're down here in the asset browser, I can press N um, and you could capture a new um, picture for this. That's a new function 4.5. Unfortunately, it's a bit buggy and it's not working for me. Um, I tried to find a way around it, but so far it's not working, but hopefully it's coming. The function is there. So you can kind of um, capture a nicer image. You can basically render something render here this image and then it would allow you to like basically take a screenshot and plug that in here like right from within blender so you don't have to like make a screenshot save that somewhere and then direct the preview to that new image you can just do it right out of blender but well it doesn't work yet so um can't f show it to you unfortunately um in any case so this is the asset browser i think it's pretty cool um but I also wanted to show you um, how to get these files into a new file. So let's have this uh, here. I saved this file in my asset library folder. So if I make a new, a new scene and I want to bring these in again, um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. And it's, you can, they are accessible through the import settings here. So it, right now it says follow um, preferences. 
but you have basically three um, options here the first one here is link which actually links the file to this new thing you drop here it will link it to the original file in your user library folder that would mean um, once you once I drop this in here and you see that's with, with the geometry node tree once I drop this in here and make any changes to this the original asset library file in my folder is going to be changed and you might or might not want to do this so this is I this is an option I never really use um, there's the append function which really just appends the object um, like you would do when you choose file append um, every time I drop in this uh, new item I'm gonna get rid of this guy here for a second so every time I, I kind of put this in here drag and drop it's gonna be a new object and if I make any changes to this I only make changes to this however if I let me go back if I say append and reuse data I do this and I put in another one and if I now go and change this it will change also the data in here because it's always using the same data again that might or might not have use cases that is actually useful um, or might not so in most cases I actually use the append function normally this one yeah that's the one I use for the most part um, so yeah that's pretty much all the functions that you have now just an afterthought is well the downside of course is that it's blender specific so whenever there's the time to kind of use a new platform or I don't know blender ever goes out of fashion right can happen um, and you've spent a lot of time building up a massive asset library of course there will be problems because that asset library is very specific to blender and it can only read blend files it cannot read fbx or anything else um, it, it's very handy but i'm i'm always kind of hesitating with this very specific app specific stuff because yeah should i now sit there days on end and just like convert all my files into like assets or whatever probably not such a great idea um, because again it doesn't transfer over to a different package and um, that might be an issue right we spend a lot of time on it but on the other hand of course like if you just do little by little whenever right and you don't really focus too much on again spending hours and days and weeks on building asset libraries yourself I think a good way to look at it is that I would maybe at the end of a project at the end of like an image I did I would kind of look at what reusable assets would be in that scene and which ones I might use again and then maybe just I spent like five to ten minutes at the end of like that particular image just like figuring out okay I'll probably use this 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 and this and then like save that to my user library file of course I should make sure that like I delete the things that I don't need out of that file um, because otherwise it could get really really heavy if you have lots and lots of different things in that scene and suddenly you have a couple of gigs per image um, sitting in that user library and like clogging everything up that probably also makes the load times a lot longer so that's about it for the asset library